Good morning. The scripture today comes from Galatians 6, verses 7 through 10. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Thank you, Tim. Next Sunday, we'll begin Advent. We're wrapping up um, our walk through Galatians. Today, we're going to be talking about sowing and reaping eternal life together. I don't know if you can remember a really good time that you spent a long time getting ready for. Do you remember one? I remember saving for a few years for us to go on our Disney vacation. The boys did chores and worked for their grandparents. I put quotes around worked for their grandparents and got paid and they gathered their money. And we went on this Disney vacation that had, had we had really spent, you know, we we're just we weren't rolling in cash. So we had to save and we would make the choice all the time. Let's not go out to eat today. Let's let's eat at home and we'll put a you know 20 more bucks in the Disney fund and that kind of thing. But I just want you to know that when we went to Disney, we rocked. It was it was crazy good. And uh, Stephen had saved up his money, and he bought the brand new, just come out, VHS of Aladdin. And then we watched it over and over and over and over and then over and over. Yeah, yeah. Tammy's like, it's true. And when he was in high school, he and a, a friend of his uh, performed in Aladdin in in. Uh, in costume for our talent, they they rented the co costumes and did one of the big numbers. I should remember it all. Um, have you ever had something where you knew you couldn't get there unless you really did a lot of preparation? And what if somebody said, as we did to the boys, here's what's going to happen. We're going to, two years from now, we're going to go to Disney. Everything we're doing is about going to Disney. And they would come back over and over again. You know, we're going to Disney. Your friends would say, hey, I hear you're going to Disney. Well, yeah, we are going to Disney. What are you looking forward to? And we would do all of that over and over and over. Paul begins Galatians and he says, grace and peace to you. And then he says, while you live in this evil age. Grace and peace. He ends. The, the the letter coming back to if you are faithful and move on you will inherit eternal life you will be part of what god is doing i would like to submit today that we are sowing and reaping eternal life together you know sowing and reaping they're the beginning and the end of a process right perhaps y'all can recognize that that's a a farming uh, metaphor. So here we are. We're going to sow and reap. How far are those apart on this Thanksgiving day in the fall? Well, uh, if you raise some crops, you you plant in uh, February and you harvest in September. If you do others, you plant maybe in, in March or April after the last fr frost, and then you reap in November. When I was pastor in Arkansas and most of the families there were farm families, and most of them, their primary crop was soybeans. Uh, there were several families that wrote one check a year to the church. They tithed what they got when they sold their beans. 
once in a while they would get along some sorghum you know you get raise some sorghum sell it a little bit here and there sometimes you, you might even find them raising some feed corn or whatever those were little bitty little bitty things they might contribute along what they did was they he harvested the the beans in november and that was the big check i would like to submit to you that we are in the midst of the world between sowing and reaping and along the way we do our sowing and reaping don't we aren't there things that you end up doing for a while and you re you re reap the reward and so let's just look at that passage that tim read as we wrap up galatians and remember that paul is proposing that we experience grace and peace and eternal life in the midst of the evil world does anybody need convincing that we have some mess going on in our world so here we are. The first thing I want to say is that we must be careful to not be deceived. He says, do not be deceived. So we must be careful not to be deceived about our responsibility and the opportunity. The responsibility and the opportunity. You know, some people believe that you have the grace of God, and that means that in the end you go to heaven when you die, and that what happens in between is kind of immaterial. Well, I would just like to say that everybody in the world is wanting everybody else in the world to wake up and say, no, there's there's quite a bit going on and consequences happening in between now and when we each die and go into the arms of God beyond this life. Grace, you see, gives us free access to the love of God and free. And it means that we are not only in the love of God, but we are participating in the love of God. In fact, Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And what he means by that is just watch. When you hold resentments, they stay in the world. When you get revenge, the ripples of that go out. I don't know if you've seen Spirited yet. It's one of the new Christmas uh, musicals on, that's been produced. I love it. it. One of the big themes is ripples. And if you have good ripples going out in the world, that's what happens. If you have bad ones, that's what happens. And when I walk around in my house and in the community, I know some days there's ripples one way and some days there's ripples another. What Paul is saying is don't be deceived. The world is being created by and the world is experiencing life by how we participate in life together so we are participating in christ we're participating in god we're participating in the spirit and the grace gives us free access so you say oh i'm not, i don't deserve it i'm i'm out god doesn't love me and jesus would hang there on the cross and say yeah you didn't know what you were doing and even if you did welcome come back right now welcome back start over today do not be deceived you see, there were people that Paul was dealing with who were saying, if you're going to have the love of God, you have to do this list of things. And they would have a short list and some have a long list. If you do those things, then you can have access. That is not grace. A gift is not something you pay for or earn. A gift is something given out of the graciousness of the one who gives the gift. And that is the way God gets, gives us grace. It also is that grace gives us freedom. Now, this is trouble. This is trouble. If you're actually going to be free, that means that you get to choose. And you, if we could all agree and enforce it, then I could just say, well, here's our list of things. You can do those and you can't do these. And if you do them, we're gonna we're gonna hold you accountable and we're gonna make you do what we say you need to do. And we're gonna keep you from doing all that you're not supposed to do. But the grace of God makes us free. And Paul says. In Galatians 5, it is for freedom Christ has set you free. And don't go back into slavery, he says. Don't go back into the slavery with the law of ordering yourselves and other people around. And then he says that we also have the Spirit. And the Spirit is there. And if you want to know if you have the Spirit, then look. Here's the, here's the things that come from the flesh from not having the spirit, not being in secure in the love of God. Here's what you act like. Here's how it works out. 
Here's the fruit of that. And then here's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love and joy and peace and patience and gentleness and tenderness and self-control. So here's what we're invited into. Don't be deceived. Look around inside yourself and look around in the world and notice who is in Christ and who is not in Christ. Notice who's in the spirit and who's not in the spirit. And you'll be able to tell and be careful not to be deceived. The second thing is that we must not leave the grace and eternal life we share. We must not leave it. So here we come again this week. We gather, we take the bread and the cup. And then the question comes, will we stay in Christ? We have entered into Christ by taking the bread and the cup. We have rehearsed in our minds, in our prayers, and in worship that we are in Christ. And Paul keeps saying in the letter to the Galatians, don't forget, don't be deceived, don't wander away. You start there, you finish there, be in Christ. Oh, man. So I asked the question, where do we go to decide who we are? Where do we go to decide how we will live? Where do we go? I come back to it again. I've said it a few times in this series, but the temptation would be, especially if we are being deceived, is that we would get up and want to know how the world's going. So we turn on some media to tell us how the world's going. Well, I would just like to submit to you that is not who's in charge. It is not who's in charge. This is not who tells you how it's going. If we are part of eternal life, we are part of what God's doing. In fact, I was reading a book this past week, and the author took time to talk about all the many, many, many thousands of local, small, neighbor to neighbor things that are changing. And those things are not asking the government for permission to make changes about how they relate. They're not asking for government funding or private funding. They're just changing the way they relate as neighbors and that that is multiplying quickly. Do y'all like the hearing about that? I like hearing about that. And what's eventually gonna happen as that continues is that as that multiplies out and moves, it's gonna be experienced that the people in charge aren't in charge and they're not being asked and they're not being depended on. And it's gonna cause a panic. And let me tell you when that happened in the past, it was about 150 AD after the church had had two generations of multiplying through the Roman world and you couldn't stop it. Y'all like thinking about that? I like thinking about it. You couldn't stop it. They weren't asking Rome to solve problems. They weren't asking their Jewish religion to solve problems or their Zoroastrian religion to solve, solve problems or the Greek gods or the Roman gods to solve problems. They were actually coming together and in this great little bitty, this huge network of little bitty groups of people who actually loved one another and cared for one another. They could not be stopped because they were just going to be good neighbors and there didn't need to be a law about it. They were just going to love one another and they didn't have to be told. They were actually invited to do what was already done for them and in them and through them in Jesus Christ. Where do we go to decide who we are and how we will live? If we go to the grace of God, then we will live grace with each other. If we go to love of God, then we will love one another. That's how it will be. If we live our eternal life, the life of God in us and through us and in our relationships, then we will reap eternal life. Do not think God can be mocked. This world will demonstrate whether climate change has anything to do with human behavior. We're going to keep learning about that, you know? Y'all know there's a disagreement though? Did y'all know that there's a disagreement on whether you ought to have individual responsibility or uh, community uh, mutuality? Uh, we have a democratic party. The people will say, lends to uh, irresponsible, uh, just meeting needs without responsibility. And then you would have this Republican party who's so individualistic, they forget we're connected. 
And I would just submit to you that that's evidence of how you don't pick parties to solve problems because they have to be in power. So they have to emphasize the things that make them unique from the other. And when I have to emphasize what makes me unique from you and you have to emphasize what makes you unique from me, we can't be together very well. Where do we go to decide who we are and how we will be? I say that what we do is we go to the grace of God. We go to the ways we become part of the eternal life of God. We don't go to the world. We don't go to the empires, to the power system. We are doing good because we're part of the life of God. We're not doing evil because we now love ourselves, our neighbors, and the earth. Why do we change? Because love shows us how to change and what love would look like if we were to really choose to love. And then... The third thing is we are sowing and reaping eternal life together. We're already sowing and reaping eternal life together. That's what's happening. Or we're sowing and reaping the flesh. It's already happening. We are sowing and reaping eternal life. So what's, what's Thursday? Thanksgiving. I mean, what our family does is we stop before we eat and we say, everybody, let's say what you're thankful for. So what do you what do you say? What do y'all think? Think of some things that you're thankful for. Family. Jesus. Good health. What? Church. There you go. Friends, family, yeah. Food, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, now I'm, that's a lot salivating. Yeah, I'm thinking about Thursday. That's good. I think it's interesting that we know there's so much to be thankful for. And then sometimes we forget to be thankful for what's happening in the times that are hard. Have you gotten to the other side of something hard and you realize that you didn't get that, you didn't get through it on your own? Have you? I have. I've I've realized so many times that I thought I was alone, but there were people around and things happening within me that couldn't happen except in that what I thought was a hard time. And they are hard. They really are hard. Please don't think that just because eternal life is working, that it doesn't include it being hard. Jesus was not hanging on the cross and saying, I promise God getting what he wants in your life will always be happy and painless. He was hanging on the cross saying, on the other side of this, eternal life has resurrection. But it's on the other side of this. on the other side of what can be very difficult. And so here we are, and I believe we are sowing and reaping eternal life. We are here. We're not off in a thousand other places we could be. We're sitting here, and we're remembering Christ, and we're sharing Christ again. We returned to the table, and we took the bread and the cup. We were reminded of the body and blood of Christ. We were the ones who said again today, with people all around the world, we are not going to get up in the morning or look during the day and ask someone other than you, Jesus Christ, to tell us who we are and how we are to live. And when we know who we are in Christ and when we live faithful to Jesus Christ, the ripples of the eternal life of God move out. It cannot be stopped. And finally, we trust Christ. We learn from Christ. We become Christ. And as we gather for Thanksgiving on Thursday, I'm encouraging us to be very clear on all of the beautiful good things there are to be thankful for. And there are many, especially for those of us who have enough 
And I would like us also to be thankful that we are part of eternal life. And some of the hardest things we see when we look around and some of the hardest things we deal with inside of ourselves are also the places where God shows up, where God in, helps us endure, and where God gives us hope beyond what we are dealing with. Well, there was the letdown when we got back from Disney World. Y'all know about that? Because what, what do you end up back in when you get back from Disney World? You see, you see, when you get back to life, there's not this underground world of paid people who are, you know, because Disney World is run underneath the ground, right? You know that, right? So the, there's a there's all of the the tunnels and places and everything underneath what you see when you're going around the park, and then people pop up in costume, ha, ha, you know, and 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 then everything works, and you get back to the real world, and that's just not happening. It is you walk around and people show up grumpy and there was there was well I mean and every night there's not a firework you know and you can't get autographs from Cinderella and Aladdin I mean what's what's going on we're back in the real world but I would submit to you that if we have eyes of faith we would see that there is a God who's working and it may surprise us how well God is working in the places we don't see and taking us through times that we don't understand, that can be very hard, and bringing us to the other side, that there is a life of God in the midst of everything going on, and our faith says that when we see the cross, we weep, and yet we do not weep as those without hope. We weep as those who have now, some people would say heaven's like going to Disney World, you know. Uh, I, well, I mean, I, I think heaven's just where grandma cooks the cookies again, you know, with just the right amount of orange rind in the sugar. Cookie. And nobody does it. I haven't found it yet. But she would put orange, you know, and I think, well, hey, grandma, what you got? You know, and that, I think, well, what? Did, and then I think, well, I'm I'm doing the best of the world but i also think that i know some people i sat with while they died and their death was not easy and i think they'll be there too and just being together in the love of god will be sweeter than the sugar because god's love and life cannot be Lord, I thank you that you are here, and you are here in every moment, and I ask that you would help us to seek your spirit as we ask the question, who am I, what is there for me to do, who are we as Wendell Christian Church, and what do you have for us to do? As Advent begins, as the days continue to grow shorter, and the night's darker, help us to be reminded that we shall keep the candles burning, we shall light the lights, we shall be the ones who say the darkness can come, and the darkness can have its full say, and the light will have the final say. Hatred can work, and the flesh can reap what the flesh reaps, and we will be the ones who say that your love and your spirit will keep working, and we will sow and reap your spirit, your eternal life, to your glory, glory of Christ, with the fruit of the Holy Spirit flowing through our lives. Amen.